Are you setting yourself up for success by preparing properly for your matches? Now, of course, there's a huge difference between what the pros do and what a recreational player can do to prepare for a match. For pros, I really want to say preparation for matches start in the off season with tactical new impulses, with athletic development, with technical development, and of course with mental work. And that's all they do. They sleep, breathe, eat tennis. I used to do that. And of course, that's impossible for recreational players to recreate. But what are the components that you can now use to prepare better for your matches? Let me run you through it. Now, I think if you're an invested recreational player and you're playing tournaments, you're playing league, I think it is reasonable to start the preparation 24 hours before your match. It starts with the physical components. Are you drinking enough? And I'm talking about water. <laughs> no alcohol the night before a match. A good solid meal, low in fat, no burgers, double fries, and three Cokes on top of it. A good night's sleep. Now for junior players, we always advocate for eight to 10 hours of sleep. For adults, can we make it reasonably seven to eight hours? You do wanna have a good night's rest. That's really crucial. Now, when should I get up? Depending on who you talk to on the pro tour, people get up three to five hours before a match if they play before noon. So depending also, of course, if they played a match the night before, if they played a longer match the night before, but sometimes we really can't influence that as the mere mortals. But I would suggest that if you do play before 10, 11 o'clock, you at least get up two to three hours before your match. Eat a light breakfast. Again, no huge breakfast. You can always replenish later on court or even before the match with snacks, banana, energy gels, energy bars, a bagel, something like that, something light. You rather want to get on the court slightly hungry because that's a lot better than being completely stuffed because that can get ugly very soon. Now, of course, the pros work with nutritionists. We don't have that luxury, but just common sense tells you that if you have an afternoon match, don't have a big old like meatloaf lunch, just again, have something light and eat at least two to three hours before. It's really crucial that on court you don't feel like you have to make a quick trip to the bathroom because you're too full. So rather light than heavy. If at all possible, try to warm up. Just hit some balls. Now again, the pros do nothing else. They sleep, eat and do tennis all day long. So if they have a match in the morning, they probably warm up once. They do a physical warm up in the weight room, for instance, they do light weights, they do resistance band work, they do a whole lot of things, and then they go out and play. Should they play an afternoon match or a night match, a lot of players, most players, I would say, come out twice. They come out in the morning, have a light hit, and then before the match, they come out. And it's really different from player to player. Some like to play points, some totally avoid playing points. And that is something that you need to figure out individually. Do you want to play some points to feel good? Do you not want to play points? Do you just want to groove? How long do you want to hit? And sometimes that's really limited with our busy schedules and of course court availability. But if at all, go out and hit some balls. Now, what can you do if you don't have court time or you can't find anybody to hit with? Anything is better than nothing. Go hit on the wall, do shadow swings, rent the ball machine, or maybe you can you know, get a half hour hitting lesson in with the pro. Really, really make an effort to think it through and plan. Even for instance, if you had to travel from one side to the other, I always think it's better if you hit. So let's say you can hit on a public court for 30 minutes and then you travel to whatever club get a hit in because I see so many players come on court and they're neither physically nor mentally prepared to really jump into action right away. And you only have five to 10 minutes to warm up the mental preparation. Now, of course, if you have a match in the morning and it's ideally the first thing that you do in that day, you can get into that frame of mind that you're ready to compete. But a lot of times league matches, challenge ladder matches, whatever it is, are in the afternoon after we already had a full and busy day that, yeah, kind of asked for our brain capacities in other ways. So what I would suggest 
before you're hitting, before you do a physical warm up, find a quiet area and just do some mindful breathing for about five minutes to just really make a clear transition from office, family stuff, to now tennis. This is your time and you need your wits about you. Pros prepare for their matches with now an unbelievable amount of information. There are statistic services that a lot of players employ that really break down exactly what the other player is gonna do at what point in a match. They can predict play patterns based on previous matches. And top players like Novak Djokovic, Matteo Berrettini, Iga Swiatek, Ash Barty, all use them. A lot of players also watch video. And with YouTube out there and all kinds of other social media, at least you can get a glimpse. So for instance, Sam Stoser, before her first match at the Australian Open, she played a very unknown player, very young upcoming player. She at least saw her on YouTube, on a video from some 25K tournament somewhere. So Pro players can get a lot of information from previous matches that their opponent played. And of course, their coaches, that's their job, right? We as coaches, we're looking at the other player. We're trying to figure out what their strengths and their weaknesses are. So what do you do if you don't know your opponent? You have five to 10 minutes to get ready for a match. Give them any kind of variation in balls, high, heavy, short, slice, wide, slower, faster, and see how they react. So if you see any one shot that they're uncomfortable with, so for instance, you slice a ball shorter to somebody and they really have a hard time getting under the ball, well, duh, that's what you're gonna do in the match. I'm always a little weary talking to other players about the matches that they have against my next opponent because I'm a very unique player. I have a different tool set than that player. And from match to match, things can be really different if you just rely on hearsay. Again, if the pros use all their statistics and a pro coach is working with you, that expertise I would trust. But be a little careful when somebody says, oh, this is how I played, this is what happened in the match, because we're all unique players. So trust your instincts on the court, in your warm up run them through a scenario of all shots and then figure out your game plan. So most pro players now are actually traveling with a physiotherapist and a trainer, or a lot of times that person is combined. And it's that person who helps them with the warm up with very specific routines tailored towards that athlete's needs. it is but I find that adult recreational players are very reluctant to get a proper physical warm-up before they even hit and I would suggest that you do that before lessons before hitting sessions before practices but especially before matches because again you only have five ten minutes in your warm-up that you want to use not to get physically warmed up you want to use that to scout your opponent. So here are some things that you can do as dynamic warm-up that are common with all juniors, that were common when I was on tour. And that's a long time ago, and we knew that warming up is a good thing. So even before you go on the wall, the ball machine, your hitting session before the match, do these dynamic warm-up exercises. Find an area. If you want to be away from people and you feel kind of silly doing them, don't, because all they see is an athlete taking care of his or her body. And that's exactly what we need. It's an intimidation factor right off the bat, by the way. Right here on the court, go in the parking lot, go to the wall area, go to a grassy area, wherever it is, find, what is this, 20 yards or something, and you have the perfect conditions to warm up properly. So let's get started. Just nice and easy, jogging, do that up and down a couple of times. And then you can do increasing arm circles. 
You can always do that up and back once or twice. You can do the same, just hopping backwards. So this is a little bit of a coordination thing also. Just skipping back, just loosening up. And I always find that when I was still competing, that this is a great transition from, again, whatever I was doing before to now it's my time on the court. All right, shuffle. You want to get a low base. Next one, karaoke. So just front crossover, back crossover, up and back. Everybody's favorite, butt kicks. And these are just suggestions. You can Google dynamic warm up for all kinds of sports. So again, just suggestions, but pick six or seven of these, add some jump rope work onto it, and you're golden. All right, toesies. You just simply walk on your toes. And then heelsies. I never know who came up with these names. And it looks kind of funky, but you definitely feel that in your shins. Okay, lateral lunges, back and forth. Try to keep your upper body somewhat straight, but your butt can go back. One more here. Lunge with a twist. So a little balance work in there too. All right, A-frame skips. All right, hip openers. And I've been doing this, what now, three, four, five minutes? And I'm feeling pretty warmed up and kind of ready to play. All right, so again, for me, this is a great transition if I were to still compete or when I was still competing get a clear transition from your day to tennis. All right, another crucial part of getting warmed up is to prepare your shoulder. And to my mind, there's nothing better than a pull rope. So this comes from the ADV Fitness Kit. The link with which you can save 10% is down in the description, but I'm just gonna show you a few of the exercises that you can do. And of course, there's plenty more. These are just some suggestions to warm up and protect your shoulder. So the cool thing is, you got your carabiner and you can just clip it into whatever you have, a fence, net post, something. And I'll start with external rotations. So I'm just tucking my shoulder in here, 90 degrees from elbow to upper arm. And I'm just rotating outwards. And then of course you have your internal rotation. So again, I have a 90 degrees angle here. And just pull to the inside. You can do row pulls, just working the muscles between your shoulder blades. You can do some back rotation here. So if you look at it from the side, you would do this. You can get your triceps warmed up. Even work on pronation. If you see that here, my forearm turns up and out. So I like to do repetitions of three sets 15 times, and then I switch also doing the left arm because yeah, I don't want to look like the one-armed Hulk. So have fun with those exercises and protect your shoulder. Now, and of course, you thought you were done when match point has been played. Eh, wrong. Prepare for your next match by taking care of your body after your match. So what I would suggest is find a stationary bike, or if you don't have access to that, just piddle jog. That's what I call it, not quite sure. Just really slow, shake out your body, five, 10 minutes. Just process mentally and also physically 
And then of course, drink lots of water. If you have any kind of nagging things, any slight tweaks, put ice on it, take an ice bath, and really make sure that you take care of your body because that was something definitely that was not as advanced when I played. And I wish I had had the knowledge and also the help back then to teach me these things.